Hello, uh, Randy here again, uh, making my second installment. Um, this one's going to be about, um, you know, chemo and radiation. So in the last, um, you know, in the last video, um, you know, I went over like a uh, diagnosis and uh, benefits and, um, you know, emergency room and the colonoscopy and uh you know that stuff right so this one here i want to make uh, all about chemo and radiation so anyway um and also this can be applied you know to you know a lot of stuff i talk about can be applied to any you know cancer diagnosis uh but a lot of this will be about my condition uh, specifically i want to go over a couple definitions uh metastasize uh means that the uh you know cancer is spreading and malignant is like uh, it grows uncontrollably or it's spreading and you know it grows uncontrollably um and then you know there's different ways to administer uh, chemo and it depends on the stage and the location of your uh, tumor right so anyway um i want to kind of go through the stages i have stage three uh, rectal cancer so anyway, I just did a little research, you know, just to throw this in here. Uh, stage one is uh, may just be uh, surgery, you know, no chemo, no radiation, you know, because it hasn't infected other organs, and uh, not much tissue would have to be, you know, removed from around the tumor uh, to get all the uh, cancerous material out, right? So stage one. Stage two, it's a larger tumor that uh, hasn't spread to lymph nodes or other organs. Stage three. Uh, tumor um, has spread to lip nodes, but not other areas of the body, and that's where I'm at. So I have rectal cancer. It's down close to my anus, and um, you know, just below, like my, uh, you know, my bladder, and it has spread to some lymph nodes. So stage three, it hasn't spread to any other uh, organs uh, so far. And then uh, stage four, it's metastasized, and the cancer spread to other areas of the body. Right, so. Anyway, thank God I caught this uh, as soon as I did. But anyway, um, and then, you know, as far as treatment goes, um, you know, there's different types of chemo treatments for different, like I said, uh, different stages and different locations. But uh, just a few of them is like, uh, well, is like an IV drip. So some people go through like an IV drip and they'll sit, you know, at, at the, uh, like the chemo center and um, they'll, uh, they will, uh, you know, sit there with an IV, and sometimes you sit there for five or six or seven hours, and maybe that a couple times a week. You know, some people just get pills, uh, and they take a pill. You know, I think I saw somebody come in there the other day, and they, uh, you know, they were just getting like a pill every once, uh, twice a week uh, to treat their cancer. Um, you know, there's also another thing called immu immunotherapy, and that's where they, uh, I guess, boost your immune system, fight. Uh, fight cancer right and they've suggested that I might try that right because I you know at the end of this I'm gonna have surgery and uh, if they can't get rid of enough of the cancer they're gonna have to cut out so much of my intestines and my sphincter muscle that I may end up on a colostomy bag so I'm hoping that this treatment will work enough that you know they can go in and do surgery and I'll end up you know uh, you know you know with my normal stuff working you know uh, and not have to have the colostomy bag. And then, of course, radiation as well. Uh, so, and there's other treatments, you know, all kind of different stuff. But anyway, I just thought I'd throw a few of those out there because that's kind of what's in my uh, in my purview. Um, so anyway, you know, on my treatment, man, oh man, I'm going to turn this fan down. <laughs> Okay, sorry about that. So in my treatment, um, you know, my chemo treatment, so I go in and I spend about two hours in this uh, pretty nice room. You know, it's got, you know, four or five bays with curtains, nice recliner and a TV, and uh, they, they do a drip uh, uh, for about two hours, right? So anyway, I had a port installed. Um, you know, well, let me back up real quick. You know, got another doctor. Right, so that's doctor number five, um, and um, 
I had to do a consultation with him uh, about getting the port installed, and then also a consultation with the uh, the uh, um, the anesthesiologist. Right? There's a lot of terms to remember here, so I tried to write everything down. Um, but anyway, with the anesthesiologist, and uh, so that didn't take long, you know. But anyway, the doctor I did the the doctor I did the um, you know the the consultation with. Uh, it was a different doctor that did the surgery, but whatever, it was no big deal. It all worked out fine. But anyway, I wanted to show you the port real quick. So right here on my chest, if you can look right here, there's a little, there's a little uh, sticks out here on my chest. You, right now I got the ball in, uh, but the, it sticks out on my chest right here. And if you look behind this tape right here, you can see a little tube that goes under my skin, just under my shoulder, and it's going into one of the main arteries right there, like above the heart. And uh, you know, the reason they do that is because I guess I'm getting such a strong dose of chemo and, um, you know, do, and, uh, and, a long, and my time period is so long that they told me that if they put it in your veins, it ends up uh, messing up your veins because the veins in your arms and stuff are much smaller. So I guess it could collapse them or something like that, uh, you know, with, with too much chemo going into your veins in your arms. So, but anyway, the surgery, you know, I was put under anesthesia. I don't remember a thing. Uh, and, and even when I got done with surgery, I went straight over and got my first thing of chemo and got the, uh, the bladder bowl. And I'll, I'll show you that. So this ball here, it's pretty small. I'm on, uh, I got the ball yesterday. Um, I, got, I got it uh, yesterday at 11 o'clock and then I get it out tomorrow at 11 o'clock. So that's nice. At least I don't have to sit there for eight hours or whatever. I can bring the ball home with me and I don't have to have it for 48 hours. So I get it out tomorrow, um, which is nice. So I can carry this around with me, you know, kind of a pain in the butt. I'm always getting this uh, tube caught on something, but you know, it, it's pretty pretty convenient. I can carry it in my pocket, right? So this just drips in. I don't have to keep it up high or anything. I just carry it around, lay it down, do whatever with it. It's about empty now. You can see it's kind of usually this bladder sticking out a little further. But anyway, they have different balls, and they they you know let the chemical go in at different speeds, right? So that's that. So I carry this around with me uh, twice a day, but when I was going through radiation, I had a different setup. I mean, same kind of thing, but it was a little bit different. But we'll go over that. Um, let's see. So, uh, yeah, I go every two weeks. Also, the, you know, the, the chemo helps as it runs through your bloodstream. Uh, my understanding is, is that it stops the cancer from metastasizing or spreading to other organs. And it also does work on the, the tumor itself as well. So, uh, you know, keep that in mind. Uh, side effects that I've been I've experienced from chemo is uh, when when I'm using the uh, this little ball right here has a higher dose and and it's a higher input rate right so it's it's just a more concentrated uh, amount going in you know all at once. So what happens is the tips of my finger when I touch something cold they kind of start stinging, and in my mouth if I drink something cold the back of my throat and my tongue starts stinging. Um, and then also my feet. Uh, it's not too bad. And once I get the ball out and a couple days goes by, that kind of subsides. So it doesn't last for a long time. And, uh, you know, the doctor was telling me I needed to wear gloves and to be very, very cautious of it. And so it hasn't been that bad. It's probably worse for some people than others. Uh, but I think they did tell me that I have to be careful because I think I could cause some kind of permanent damage. If I uh, drink, you know, I you know eat ice cream or just really just abuse it and, and don't pay attention to it. So, so I try to be you know, a little bit cautious about it, but uh, but it hasn't been all that bad. So, um, as far as fatigue, um, you know, it hasn't been uh, you know it hasn't been that bad, but I do notice it. You know, I slept good last night, and that was nice, but uh, I, I feel a little tired now. Not quite as motivated to do stuff. I mean, I. After radiation, I had two weeks off from everything because I had to heal up from the radiation before we could start chemo again. And um, uh, I was feeling a lot of energy. Uh, once I got past all the pain from radiation and started really healing up, the past couple days, you know, I've had a lot of energy and it's felt good. But now that I'm back on the chemo here, a little bit run down, you know, but still, still uh, getting around okay. Um, you know, I've been able to uh, do a little bit of exercising and stuff with this uh, port in too. So. You know, once you get it in and get past the first couple of days and your skin heals up and stuff, uh, you can pretty much do your life as regular, except for when you got the ball. Um, you know, showers and stuff. You can take regular showers and everything with, when you don't have the ball, but then you can't get it all wet when you have the, tu the tube in there. So, 
Um, and then, uh, you know, they, I've heard them say something about chemo brain. Uh, I kind of notice it a little bit, maybe, but uh, not too bad, you know. Uh, I just do everything regular, you know, go to the store or whatever. And I do find myself getting, uh, I don't know, I don't know how to explain it. It's not real bad or anything. But, you know, I don't feel like my decision making is as, uh, you know, sharp as it usually is. But, but it's really not bad. So, anyway. And then I got six months of chemo altogether, right? So that's kind of this chemo thing. Uh, I don't know what else, uh, you know, that to uh, bring up about the chemo. That that that's pretty much what I'm going through at the moment. You know, uh, I still have another three months of chemo. Uh, so radiation. This is where it really gets. Uh, the radiation is the you know this is crazy. That is what really the roughest part. But anyway, so before I went into radiation, I, I went into I did a thing called simulation. And uh, I went to simulation two weeks prior to uh, uh, two weeks prior to the treatment. And basically what they do there is a CT scan uh, and they after they you know they put you on they lay you down on you know a bed and you go through the machine which is round your whole body goes in there and you know you have to pull your pants down you know so, you, so your butt's in the air and um, uh, you know, there's a couple. You know, once they do the once they do the scan, they come back in with the pictures and everything, and they mark on your left and right butt cheek, uh, you know, from the pictures and stuff because they're going to use those markings. I've, I've heard that they, they tattoo them on there, uh, but they just use like markers on me, um, and uh, you know, they they mark on your left and right side, and then right at the top of your like butt crack. And that way they can line up the uh, the, ra the laser, the radiation, so that it's in the exact right spot for when they, uh, you know, radiate you. All right. So so you'll have to do, uh, you know, like a uh, a simulation is what they call it, but it's a CT scan. And you know, the funny thing was they had to put a sticker right on my butthole, which was interesting. But it wasn't that bad. You know, I made sure I was nice and clean. <laughs> but anyway, but yes. So when you do go into that, they are going to be right there. You know, now this is for my condition, right? My, uh, you know, rectal cancer. So, you know, I, I made sure I was nice and clean before I went there. Uh, which I always do anyway, but, you know, just wanted to make extra special that I was clean. Um, <laughs> but anyway, and then you have to drink contrast, right? So they just gave me some contrast to drink. You know, that's fluid you drink so that it will show uh, the cancer and everything better against the other organs, right? No big deal. I didn't have to really do any prep for that. Just drink the contrast. Uh, an hour ahead of time okay and then so my treatment plan was uh, I did 30 days uh, uh, 30 days and then 25 of the days was like a wider beam so it was hitting more of my like pelvis and you know my anus and the tumor and the surrounding lymph nodes uh, and then the last five days was a more focused beam but unfortunately those last five days still hit my anus and continued to burn you know, my, you know, my butt, you know, where I poop out of, and, you know, I was hoping that wasn't going to be the case, but it was, so I had a full 30 days of butt, you know, butt burn, and, uh, you know, that's what made it so brutal, so, anyway, um, and also, I had to carry the chemo ball every day during that time, so I carried it five days a week, you know, my, my uh, radiation was uh, 30 days, Monday through Friday, weekends off, thank God for the weekends off, because, I needed them, but uh, you know, and then going back on Monday was such a drag, right? But you know, got to do it. Uh, so I did it through Monday through Friday, Monday through Friday, and then I had to carry a chemo ball uh, every day, right? So the chemo ball was about twice the size of this one, right? But it was a slower, uh, you know, slower going in, and I, I think it was a, a less of a dose, you know, not as uh, concentrated. Uh, this one here is much faster and, and, and more concentrated. Uh, I'm glad to be back on this, too, because I got sick of carrying the ball around all the time. And it started hurting my chest just a little bit. Not bad. It wasn't like a terrible pain. It was just, you know, the last couple of days of having it for five days and tugging on it by accident and stuff like that. It just got a little, you know, I don't know, just a little annoying. But so I was glad to get it off on Fridays for sure. Um, uh, and, you know, like I said, I get the thing caught all the time. So, you know, it gets a little frustrating. You know what I mean? But I dealt with it and, you know, got through it. And now I'm so happy to be through it. And so now, you know, I mean, I'm three weeks past radiation now. So it's becoming a distant memory. 
Uh, so anyway, that uh, prepping for radiation. So like I said, this is by far the worst part of the treatment so far. I don't know what's coming next. I got surgery and stuff, so I don't know what all that's going to entail. But I would say this: get some liners, you know, for your underwear, uh, or even consider going ahead and getting some Depends. And you're going to need a bunch of them because, uh, you know, as I, you know, about two weeks in, as it, you know, started getting more, you know, the more intense, you know, I, I was having stuff leak all the time. You know, there was just fluid coming out of my anus all the time, and uh, I wouldn't say it was like flowing, but you know, every time, you know, I. You know, there was times I'd be sitting, driving in my car, and I'd get up, and I'd feel a little bit wet, and I'd be like, crap, man. <laughs> you know, now my pants got a stain on the back of them, you know, the old Walmart pictures. <laughs> but anyway, I didn't want all that happening, you know. And uh, so I started wearing, like, some kind of liners in my underwear, and they helped a lot, you know, just to keep me from, uh, you know, messing up my pants and things like that. Uh, you know, uh, so, and then they also had me get Aquaphor, uh, you know, it, it, it was the, it's the type that's like um, Vaseline, you know, it's like intense skin repair. And, uh, you know, I was a little, uh, it, uh, you know, I, 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 sh I wish I would have been more aggressive with using it uh, and, and really getting a lot on there and putting it even all the way up in my, you know, because, you know, when you're going to the bathroom and you're having all this burn and this pain, um, you know, it's good to have a good bunch on there because it does help lube when things are coming out, you know, so, uh, you know, so at first I wish I would have been more aggressive with using it. Uh, you know, at first I was just rubbing on a thin film and, you know, towards the very end I started being pretty aggressive with it, but I wish I would have been doing it all along because I think it would have helped quite a bit to tell you the truth. Uh, cause remember, uh, my tumor is coming out of my anus. And so not only am I, you know, got the fecal matter coming out, but I also got the you know, that tumor coming out and that tumor is getting burned as well. So it's like, a, you know, both those things together. So that aquaphor really helps not only to protect the skin a little bit and recondition the skin, but helps with the outflow. <laughs> so anyway, uh, and getting it up in there. Uh, you know, fatten up. Uh, eat, eat as much as you can before you go into radiation. Try to eat and get yourself fattened up. I never really uh, felt like chemo stopped me from eating or anything. It didn't ruin my appetite. But uh, before you go into radiation, you're going to want to uh, fatten up. You know, eat as much as you can and gain some weight. Uh, I bought a bunch. I bought several pairs of sleep pants. I'm glad I did. And that's all I wore all the time. Because every time I go to an appointment, I had to pull my pants down. You know, this, that, or the other. But the sleep pants didn't have any metal buttons on them and stuff. Because when you go through your CT scans and stuff like that, you're not supposed to have metal. And uh, so, you know, I have some nice loose fitting pants. Also, they help whenever, you know, for the pain in the, in the back. Um, you know, um, I, I wanted to talk a little bit about pro and prebiotics, but I'll, I'll do that in a minute. Um, so the treatment. So you lay on a table and they put a booster under your hips and um, and so, you know, so your butt is up in the air a little bit, right? It's not like it's way up there like doggy style, but, you know, your, your butt's up in the air a little bit. And you have to pull your pants down so they can see the marks on your, your butt cheeks. And they line up, you know, they use these pictures on the machine. I got a picture of the machine I'm going to put on here. Um, uh, you know, uh, so you, I, pull, you know, I had to pull my pants down so they could see the marks on my butt. And uh, uh, they line up the machine, you know, and take pictures. They go ahead and do another scan while you're laying there so that they can make sure that they got everything lined up. And then I think the ra actual radiation is only about one to two minutes, right? And that's enough. Let me tell you, that is enough. And then they administer the radiation and the machine does its thing. And then, you know, you get up and you go home, right? And, and, and I'll tell you, the first two weeks is not too bad. It's just it starts compounding, you know, as time goes on. And that's that last couple of weeks when you start noticing it. It's the last week. It's really bad. Right? But you'll get through it. You'll get through it. I'm testifying. Testifying here. Right? So side, of side effects, like I said, the first and second weeks were not so bad. But after that, the burn started really setting in. And, um, um, you know, since the location was near my anus and my butthole and the petrotic and, and the tumor, you know, would come out. It was all on fire. And, and it started to get brutal that last week. Um, you know, and 
and the week and a half after treatment. So the week, you know, the last week and then the week and a half after. So, you know, I, I'm just here to tell you, just mentally set yourself up for this. It's a short period of time, but and, and you can get through it, but it's not it's not nice. But you got about two and a half weeks of misery, right? So just set yourself up mentally for that so that you know what's coming and it's not like, you know, a surprise. And, um, you know, uh, you know, basically I stopped, you know, w once it started getting so painful, I stopped eating. That's why I say fatten up. You know, I stopped eating. I was only eating baked potatoes and sometimes I wouldn't eat anything during the day at all because I was just scared to go to the bathroom. Um, but I'd eat a baked potato and, you know, and uh, you're not supposed to eat anything with fiber or whatever, right? Because you don't want to have a solid stool coming out. <laughs> Could you imagine having solid stool coming through all that, um, all that uh, burned skin and stuff? Uh, you know, one time I drank a smoothie and man, yeah, it didn't even stay in my body for a minute. It went straight through. This was in the last week now, the last week, or it might have even been after I was done with radiation. I mean, it went straight through and it came out like, you know, just blasted out. And, you know, that was miserable. Uh, so I didn't do the smoothie thing again. Um, but baked potatoes seemed to work okay. You know, they, they filled my stomach up at least, but they still came straight on through. Nothing was staying in my stomach. It was all coming straight through. And uh, so, you know, I was going to the bathroom constantly. Um, and uh, so, you know, the thing is you lose weight from not only, you know, not being able to hold food in your system, but you're just not digesting it. It's just going straight through. And I think the radiation, you know, this is my opinion from what I felt. You know, I've done studies and stuff myself on like my gut and everything. Um, I think that that radiation just kills, you know, the bacteria in your stomach. It kills the mucus that's in there. It kind of messes up in your intestine lining and you can't absorb any of the nutrients from the food or any of the food, nothing slowing it down. I almost felt like at times I was just pouring it in and it was just going straight through and out, uh, you know. But that was, like I said, only the last week and, and then a week and a half after radiation, so about two and a half weeks of real, you know, misery. Uh, but, but, you know, the first three weeks, yeah, like I said, the second weekend, you know, you could definitely tell it was starting to happen. But that that final week and then the two weeks after was, uh, was the uh, brutal part. Uh, so far, uh, you know, I've lost about a total of 40 pounds from, you know, and that was during, uh, I lost 20 pounds before I ever even went to the doctor. I didn't realize, you know, you know, I, I lost 20 pounds, like I said. I, so now I'm down, I'm down about 40 pounds altogether. Uh, let's see. So anyway, and just another note, you know, since I had that tumor, you know, that would come out of my uh, anus every time I'd go to the bathroom, you know, that burn, and, and even around my, um, around my butthole there, you know, that was burned as well. Uh, it felt like, like, I was, I was pushing out, and I don't care how liquid my poop was, um, I felt like I was pushing out like a rose bush, like a rose bush branch with thorns. That's the only way I can explain it. It doesn't, it's not like that anymore though. Thank God. Thank God. Um, and you know, and it didn't help that I was losing complete control of my bowels. There for a few days, I lost com almost complete control. And that's where the depends come in. Because, uh, you know, I'd go in there and go to the bathroom. I'd think, all right, thank God that's over with. And I'd come in and lay down and I'd be damned. I'm right back up in there again. I had one night where I thought, uh, you know, uh, you know, also when that tumor would come out, I got to push it back in, right? So I tried to get into the habit of running bath water before I went to the bathroom, right? But I couldn't get the get the tub filled up, you know, in time before I had to go. So you know, every time I walked in the bathroom, it's you know, I, it was like the psychological part said we got to get going here. So I'd have to. I mean, there was many times I barely made it to the toilet and crapped all over the seat. And I've crapped, you know, I crapped all over myself a couple times, not about twice. And you know, I didn't do the depends thing. I wish I would have, but uh, I didn't want to wear the depends because I wanted to like, you know, crap in my pants and not, you know, I just. You know, sometimes you couldn't help it, you know. Um, you know, so, and, and I would fill the tub, but I had to fill the bathtub up, you know, I'd clean up the best I could. And also get a bunch of those uh, wipes that are, uh, you know, the, the, the wet wipes, you know, baby wipes or whatever. They make them for adults that are pH balanced. I've used probably, I don't know, a thousand of those things. So you're going to need a whole bunch of them. You know what I mean? 
uh, because you're going to need to use that, and you you know you don't want you don't want to use regular toilet paper while you're going through this. Um, uh, and then you know I had to lay down in the uh, I had to lay down in the bathtub in the water in order to push that tumor back in uh, when it was coming out. So I got gosh, I was in and out of the bathtub constantly. Uh, let's see. And then, like I said, one night I just couldn't stop. I think I went 10 or 12 times in one night, just you know, over and over and over. And you know, one time I was just standing there, and you know, with this radiation, you know, it hits your, you know, it hits your, you know, they try to keep it as focused as possible, but they got to get to those, uh, the uh, lymph nodes, and so it's a wider beam. So you know, it's hitting down there where your bladder is. It's hitting down there where you know your butt is, and where all your, you know, you got a lot going on in that area. And so sometimes when I go pee, you know, I just feel like I have to go pee. Well, all of a sudden that would put pressure on whatever else in there. And all of a sudden I'd find myself, uh, you know, taking a crap. And I didn't realize it, you know, and then I just had to deal with it. So a couple times that happened. Um, and then, and plus I didn't want to sit on the toilet because I didn't want to go to the bathroom. <laughs> so I was trying to avoid it as much as possible. But sometimes there just wasn't no avoiding it. Uh, let's see. Okay. Anyway, so then you know another tough part was is you know you don't want your stool to be like real hard, you know, because that's the worst thing that could happen to you, and then, and it comes out like water anyway. But uh, you know I tried. You know I didn't really take. You know you could try out some emodium or something like that, and uh, see if that might. You know, but to me I had to be very careful. I was taking a laxative, but then I don't want to take the laxative because the laxative would cause me to. Um, you know go too much and I was trying to avoid that but then I didn't want to take like a you know a stool uh, you know a hardener you know because I was paranoid if I would have had like a, a, a hard stool that I don't know that would have been uh, you know a good thing at all I think that would have been a problem I may end up back in the hospital if that happened in surgery or something they told me I might have had to get an enema if I had hard stool because you know when you take the uh, pain meds you know the hydrocodone uh, that could, they said that that could harden up my stool, but I never had that issue. It always came out like water, for the most part. I mean, water. It would just run right out. But anyway, so okay. Uh, and then, and that's about all I got here. You know, I just you know a good rundown there of what what I'm going through now. I just got done with radiation three weeks ago, um, and um, you know I will say this. You know, one night. That one night that was really rough, and I think it was right after I was done with radiation, when I couldn't stop going and I, you know all this other stuff, I thought I was dying. I really did. I thought, man, there, I must. This is, yeah. You know, I was like, this thing must be taking a turn for the worse, um, you know. And I, and you know, so that's how kind of low I got there for a minute. You know, I thought I wasn't sure what the hell was going on, but you know, I say that, you know, to say that. To let you know what it could be like, so that you know, but also so that you know you can get. You, it, it's not. That's not the case. You're going to get past it. And now here I sit. You know, it's been three weeks since my last radiation treatment, and I almost feel back to normal. And actually, I feel a little better than I did. You know, prior. You know, and and actually, when even when I started chemo, because I was having a lot of pain prior to my diagnosis. A lot of bloating, a lot of not being able to go to the bathroom. You know, just a lot of, you know, oddities going on. I lost 20 pounds. And then once I started the chemo and everything, I did feel better. My, it was easier to go to the bathroom. And, and so the chemo was probably doing its thing and, you know, helping me out there. And then radiation came along. That was a nightmare. And now here I am. And I am starting to feel even better, you know what I mean, than when I was doing just the chemo. So, uh, so I just say all that so that, you know, to give some encouragement, uh, I think you should know how far down the road you, you may end up going, but also that there is light at the end of the tunnel. You know what I mean? I'm here to testify to that, all right? It, it was a nightmare, not for that long, but it seemed like forever. But uh, but here, here I am, and I feel pretty good. Uh, and I am getting ready, regular again, and, and I'm able to hold down food regular, and I'm starting to gain weight now. You know, I, I got down to 132. I should be at 175. And I got down to 132, so 40 pounds. And now, you know, I weighed myself uh, this morning. I'm like at 138. So I'm expect, and it's a true 138. It's not because I got food in me or I haven't gone to the bathroom. You know, uh, you know, I weigh myself pretty much every day to, uh, you know, see how the food is sticking with me or whatever. 
and uh, make sure that I'm headed in the right direction. So, uh, anyway, uh, holding down food. Yep, it's been three weeks since my last treatment. One more thing I want to talk about um, is, uh, you know, I, I was toying with the idea of talking about this or not, but, uh, you know, there could be some sexual side effects. You know what I mean? So you want to talk to the doctor about that? Because uh, I watched one video where the girl said, I was watching it on YouTube, the girl said that uh, nobody ever talked to her about the fact that she may not be able to have any more kids after the radiation. So, you know, that's something to consider. Now, uh, full confession here, I did do a little test run, and everything seems to be working normal. The only thing was it hurt like hell. Uh, but that could be still because I'm not completely healed up. And... Um, you know, I'm not trying to be too, uh, you know, whatever. I'm trying to go around the subject lightly. Uh, but I was curious, you know, I was able to still get an erection and I was able to, you know, anyway. Uh, but it did seem like it, the muscle back there had been affected, like, you know, the ejaculation muscle. Um, so, you know, I don't know what's going to the end result of that is, but I did test it out just to see, you know what I mean? It is a part of our body. You know, and, and, you know, that's something else we need to consider. You know, when we're going through radiation and, and the radiation is going on your pelvis and everything. So it's a little embarrassing to talk about, but I think it's necessary to talk about. So, because it is something to consider. Um, so anyway, I just, you know, wanted to put that in there. That's something you need to think about as well. Uh, you know, your sexual function and stuff. And also bathroom function. You know, obviously there's a chance I'm going to be on a colostomy bag, but... You know, I've had some odd bathroom stuff going on, even when I go pee. Like, I can't wait now. Right now, I can't wait. i got to go right away. Uh, if, it, if the feeling hits me, it's not like i got a minute to keep. It's like time to go. Now, I don't know if that's going to stay like that, you know, as I continue to heal up and everything. But, uh, you know, we'll see. But that's really the only thing that's, uh, it's not that, that bad. But I do have to hurry up to the bathroom when it's time to go pee. But I don't have to, like, pee a lot or anything. It's just when it hits me, i got to go. Uh, so, So, that part of it. But that's all about all I got for this, uh, you know, for this here. This is the chemo and radiation portion, and I hope this was helpful. Uh, you know, that's my goal here is to put as much information about my experience and what I've learned through this process, so that if anybody's going through great uh, cancer in general and radiation and chemo, uh, you might learn a little something. But my condition in particular, because what I've heard is. Uh, the two worst uh, areas to have radiated is the neck area, you know, up around here, and then um, and then down there where I'm at. Because you can you imagine having your throat like just completely burned? Uh, I think some people have to go on feeding tubes if you end up with like throat cancer or you know anything in this area here or you know the radiating up here. You know, think about having mouth cancer, having cancer in your mouth. Uh, you know, so. Uh, but anyway, so that's what I've heard. Uh, oh, also one other note. If you are getting radiation around this area, they build this mask for you. And they, uh, they strap, they, they, they lock your, they put this mask on you and strap your head into it. And then they lock you down onto a table, you know, that you're laying on. And they strap your head to it so your head doesn't move. Because I guess you have a tendency to move your head. Uh, they didn't have to strap me down or anything. But, uh, but I guess your head, you know, it's got to stay completely, neatly. Could you imagine if the radiation had a tendency to miss, get your eyes, get your brain, you get areas that weren't supposed to. So anyway, I found that interesting. I tried to go and get some pictures and video of the uh, machine, you know, the radiation machine, but they wouldn't let me do that. And uh, uh, I do have some pictures of the uh, chemo place that I go to, so I'm going to put that on here. And I have a picture of the machine that I got the internet, so I'm going to put that in here as well. So anyway, uh, that's it for now. I'm going to make a third installment. Uh, kind of, you know, going up to, uh, you know, be uh, before and after surgery, right? So, um, you know, I might make a video before I go into surgery, and then I might make a video after I come out of surgery. So then we'll know what happens with all that. All right? So good luck, everybody. And uh, you're probably watching this because, you know, you may have some issues and, uh, you know, with, with cancer or whatever. And uh, there's a lot of treatments out there and stuff. And uh, wish you the best of luck, okay? And, uh, all right, good luck.